I'm Jesper. I'm a Danish woodworker, but I haven't been woodworking for very long. I started out building from scrap wood. That's wood like this, pallet wood, old furniture, firewood. Almost two years ago, I signed up for a scrap wood competition, where I made this coffee table from pallet blocks. It never made it into the competition because I got delayed by three months. But I don't regret making it because it really kickstarted my woodworking. But guess what? The same scrap wood competition is back. And you know what? I'm going to make a new scrap wood project. And not just make the deadline, but also win the competition and collect the first prize. That's my plan anyway. So I watched this guy from Ukraine make a cutting board with long grain and these end grain cookie inserts. And I think it looks awesome. I have all kinds of offcuts and I wonder if I can build a cutting board as amazing as this. Or perhaps even more amazing. First off, I'll need to create a form to epoxy resin all the pieces together. And I'll use this piece of old chipboard. When I have cut all the pieces, I cover them with some tape. I hope to create a form that I can reuse for future builds. So with a form that is covered with tape and sprayed with mold release, this should be possible. Technically, maybe, I don't know. I guess I'll find out later. Moving on, I'm starting to design the cutting board. My form is about 5.5 cm in height, and I'll be cutting all the wood that goes into the board to this height. I'm using my bandsaw and this homemade bandsaw crosscut jig to cut the wood. After cutting all the scraps to length, it's just a matter of putting all the wood into the form. I decided to cut the old furniture wood and the pallet wood into smaller pieces to create a more random and chaotic pattern. I have never seen a scrap wood project using so many different kinds of scraps. It literally checks all the boxes. And I think I have a really good chance of winning the competition. But to make sure I win, I'll throw in a few more pieces of scraps later. And I think I just had an idea that will absolutely lock in the victory. More about that later. I'm going to use epoxy resin to glue it all together. I'm mixing up 3 liters of resin, and yes, that's 2 to 1 of resin and hardener. Not just the hardener and hardener. Because that can cause some problems, as you very well know. The amount was just a wild guess on my part. In a moment, we'll see if I mixed way too much, or if the foam will leak, and I'll have to start all over again. So the amount of resin mixed seems to be perfect. But I totally forgot that wood floats, and especially all these small pieces. I thought that if I squeeze some more wood together, it would be easier to keep them down. So I found some pieces of walnut I crammed down there. And then I just found all things heavy and stacked on top of the cutting board. I mean, all things down to the last hammer and box with screws. While doing this, I'm also wondering if my mold will leak or if I can get it disassembled again. But that's a worry to be figured out soon enough. While I had a break, somebody messed around in my shop with some whiskey barrels. I have really no idea what's going on, so I'll just get rid of these and see how my cutting board has been doing during my break. Well, no leaks. What? No leaks? 
After a bit of unboxing action, I'm also very curious to see if the mold release works. And like magic, the mold released from the board. Australian woodworker Mark Dana told me to build projects to fit into my woodworking machines. I must have forgotten because I need to flatten this board, but my flatness is only 20 cm wide and the board is 40. I'll need to flatten it some other way and the best way I know is using my router with a flattening bit. I find a flat pallet, secure the board in the middle. Then I use some of my pipe clamps to act as rails on each side. Make sure they are perfectly level or else your piece will end up not being flat. Which is kind of the purpose with this little arrangement. Then I have two long metal things from some sliding bundles. I had a light bulb moment a year back, some would say that was the only one, where I figured out that my router came with these metal things that fitted magically in the sliding bundle slots. This allows the router to ride very close to the surface of the subject in need of flattening. I flatten both sides this way while I'm dreaming of getting a really big thicknesser, or at least a friend who has one. My track saw is total crap, so I'm trying to cut this board down to size with my bandsaw. It should be possible because the mold I made was perfectly square. So, at least in theory, the board is also perfectly square. Meaning I should be able to just run it up against the fence and get the opposite side perfectly aligned. Worked fine with the two long sides, but it turns out my bandsaw table doesn't have unlimited width. So I'll have to get a little creative cutting the two short sides. As usual, I got a few last minute ideas that almost ruined the entire project. So how would you rate the following form? I have never cut a juice glue before, and woodworkers talk about it as being one of the things they really dread doing. I found this bit in an old cheap set of router bits, looks like it could make a decent groove. I'm just quickly setting up my own little juice groove jig. Groove juice jig, groove juice jig. So let's see how I did. Fine. Good so far. Ah, oh god! I should have used a sharp quality bit and I should have moved it in the direction that would push the router into the fence and not away from it. Here is my take on how to route out the handles on the cutting board. I think that went pretty decent. The ash locks are looking pretty light and yeah, you guessed it, I fired up my torch and gave them some burn. I stopped when the epoxy started cracking on me. I really should have learned this by now. While sanding the cutting board in all ways possible, I got a crazy idea that will ensure my victory at the Scrapwood competition. By stalking the host of the competition, Tim Greenwood, I learned that he's a big fan of the wood finish from Rubio Monaco. I also learned that the other judge is working for Rubio Monaco. Thirdly, I researched that Rubio Monaco is actually food safe meaning it's safe to use on wood that is in contact with food. In other words, I can put Rubio on the cutting board. I'm sure the judges will give extra points for this little twist. So while I'm applying Rubio Monocoat in the most professional fashion I can come up with, I'm also putting up a poll here on YouTube, asking all you subscribers if you think I'm going to win. Results in a moment.
things have really started to move. After I posted the cutting board on my community feed, and you guys said I'm definitely going to win, the judge Tim asked if he could give me a call. I think that's a really good sign, because the winners always get notified ahead of the official announcement. He probably chatted with the Rubio guy, and they agreed there's only one possible winner. Oh, oh there he is. Hey up Jasper. Uh, yeah, the uh, cutting board's looking really good. But uh, the prizes are for UK only, so as much as you probably need a Rubio one-on-one -on -one training day, that, that, uh, you, you can't win, mate. Hello? Jesper? So let's uh, let's try cheer up Jesper a bit. If you just click here, look at his old videos, obviously subscribe to his channel. I'm also running uh, the scrap wood build off. Uh, Jesper's gonna put some information about it down below. Is, is he back? Jesper? No, not yet. Yeah, do all that. I'm sure that'll cheer him up. We'll be all good again. Cheers.